Hi, my name is Elizabeth, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to make yet another wine rack. Uh, if you've followed my channel for a while, you know that my very first video was how to make a wine rack. If you haven't seen that video uh, yet, I invite you to do so, especially if you like a good laugh. Not because I was particularly humorous in it, but because I didn't really know what I was doing. I had kind of a deer in headlights look. It was the very first video I had ever made in my life. And uh, it was a good message, it just wasn't that great of a delivery. And this video is going to be like a take two of that video, in which it's a little bit more uh, concise and uh, efficient delivery of the same message. And there are some fundamental differences between uh, the, that video, the other video, and this one, so they can kind of stand on their own. And the first is that in this video, I'm going to be using uh, driftwood. I did use reclaimed wood in my first video, but it was like a smooth board. But when you're talking about like deeply grooved wood and highly textured wood, uh, it's a little bit harder to drill into because these grooves can kind of make your drill bit slip where it doesn't need to go and, and you'll be drilling uh, where you don't want to drill. And in this video I'm going to show you a little trick uh, to avoid that. Uh, the next difference is uh, I'll be using Danish oil instead of wood stain. And I don't know why I haven't been using this all along. It's so much easier to use. It's uh, so much easier to clean up. And uh, it's a lot cheaper too. So uh, I'll be showing you how to use that. And instead of using uh, enamel gloss to finish the board, like I did in my first one, in this video I'm gonna be using polycrylic, which is like a poor man's polyurethane. It's a lot stronger finish than uh, gloss. It's, and it's actually even hard to scratch this stuff. So it's a higher quality uh, finish. So as you can see, this board is a little bit darker than this one already, and that's because I have already applied the Danish oil to this board and I'm now going to demonstrate how to do that on this one. So I've put a tarp down and I've propped this board up with two paint cans so that I can uh, easily get all of the sides uh, with the oil. And first of all, you want to make sure that uh, your board is completely clean, completely free of any dirt or sand. I don't have a backyard or a hose. I just took mine to the bathtub and, and scrubbed it down uh, with a dish brush. Uh, the next thing is uh, before uh, you open your can, you want to make sure that you shake it up thoroughly. Uh, and as you are applying the oil, you want to continuously shake it so that it doesn't separate and settle and cause a irregular irregularities in the color. Uh, normally Danish oil is applied with a rag, but I'm actually going to use a brush, which is fine. It's, it's not a rule or anything that you can't use one, but I'm going to use a brush because this wood is so textured and I need these bristles to help the oil access all of these little grooves and gullies in the wood. And that's it. It's, it's so easy. It's so much easier than wood stain. Danish oil all the way. I've got, um, I've got natural here, which just enhances the, the natural color of the wood. You can get this in different colors if you want to, if you want uh, your wood to be of a certain shade. So that's it. I'm going to get started uh, applying. So when you're done applying, you do kind of need to uh, wipe down uh, the surface a little bit, kind of get off all the excess. But this stuff, it's not as serious with Danish oil as it is with wood stain. You know, if you, if you put on wood stain a little bit too abundantly uh, and you let it dry, the surface uh, becomes kind of sticky. Danish oil doesn't really have that problem, which is really nice. So if you put on too much, uh, it's not going to ruin the surface. Uh, you can be a little bit sloppier with it uh, than with a wood stain. I'm actually going to set this out in the hallway because uh, it does kind of have an unpleasant odor. Most finishes do. I don't really want that hanging out in my apartment and breathing it in. So I'm going to set it out in the hallway. If you have a yard, set it out there. And unfortunately, this has to uh, be allowed to absorb into, wood, into the wood for 72 hours, for three days. Especially if you were going to put a top coat on it, which we are, we're going to use the polycrylic after this is completely dried. So that's a bummer, but that's three days that you don't have to do anything. And for your paintbrush, uh, just wash it with soapy water, like dish soap. Uh, it suggests mineral spirits, but I've had no trouble washing my brushes with uh, just dish soap and water. And now for the last coat of finish, which we're going to use this polycrylic that I like better than gloss for several reasons. Uh, one is that it absorbs into the wood, unlike gloss, which creates like a super surface that can chip. This stuff absorbs into the wood and creates 
kind of a flush shell. We are going to just apply one coat of this stuff. Uh, the directions on the back are usually for when you're dealing with brand new, uh, freshly milled lumber and you're making new furniture. And it says that it wants you to apply one coat, sand it down, then apply another coat. And that's so that you can get a perfectly smooth finish. Well, we're not even working with a perfectly smooth surface. So all we're gonna do, we're just gonna apply one abundant coat and let that dry and we're gonna cut down a lot of the time applying a second coat because we just don't need it for this kind of project. And uh, to get started, uh, remember we had to shake the Danish oil. This stuff, you're uh, supposed to stir it. And apparently shaking it uh, is too disruptive. So you have to stir it. It really specifies do not shake. So dry time for this is about two hours uh, for, for light contact. Uh, for heavy contact and heavy use, uh, it says that you want to let it dry about 24. Uh, we're probably going to compromise on that just to hurry this project along. Also, the nice thing about this uh, that's different from polyurethane is that this stuff says that it's uh, you can clean up with soap and water, which is really nice. So you don't have to use turpentine or mineral spirits or any of that other complicated stuff. So now moving on to making the leather holsters that will hold the wine bottles to the wine rack. And I've actually been using the same shape, the same pattern, the same template for my leather, uh, my leather pieces all these years, ever since the first video. Uh, all my wine racks have had the same, uh, the same shape. The very first one I came up with, it's, it works perfectly well. And it measures about 10 inches across, three and a quarter inches deep with diagonal sides, a little bit of a curvature here. But guess what? You don't have to do any of this because I can send you a scanned copy to scale of this template and then you can just print it out, cut it out and use it for your own project. So I'll put my email below uh, because after my first video I had a few viewers that asked me if, if I could send them a, a copy of this so that they, you know, they didn't have to draw it out themselves. And I was like, absolutely, that's the easiest thing to do for somebody. And pretty soon, I'm going to be bringing my DIY business into the 21st century and getting a website. So hopefully, hopefully, pretty soon, you won't even have to email me for this. I'll be able to put a quick link below directly to my website where you can just click on this, download it, print it out, and use it. So now we need to figure out where we're gonna get our leather because you don't really buy you know, leather that often. Uh, your first one uh, is, is Michael's. At any time, point in time, you can just Google Michael's coupons, just Google it, and they have a plethora of coupons constantly, and some of them are even like 40% off of one item. So this leather here, this whole, this huge leather hide here was at Michael's, I think for 40 bucks, and I got it a, a, little, bit, uh, a little bit more than half off uh, thanks to a coupon. So that's your first, uh, that's your first option. Your second option is uh, buy a leather jacket. Like if you find a leather jacket at a thrift store that's in really good condition, they've got it for like five bucks, the leather alone is worth like 40. So uh, just buy a, an old leather coat you don't care about, or if you have one lying around, use it, and, uh, and just cut it up and use those pieces. And your third option for leather is my favorite one because it is a family owned small business called Dangerous Threads. Dot com and I buy a lot of my leather uh, through them uh, off of eBay. You can find them on eBay. They have a plethora of different uh, sizes, shapes, colors, thicknesses of leather, cowhide, suede, all everything you need leather wise. They can take care of it. They do custom orders too. So check them out. Uh, they're super affordable. So now I'm going to take this pattern here, cut it out, and use it as, uh, as a template to cut out the pieces of leather that I need for my holsters. And uh, in my first video, I only used uh, one piece of leather per holster. And actually now, on all of the wine racks that I've made and sold, I use two pieces. I double it out for each holster for extra, for extra hold. So uh, I'm going to need a total of six pieces here because I'm going to make three total holsters. And I'm going to have uh, three brown pieces, 
I've already got one white piece and then I'm going to use two, I'm going to use two, uh, two blue pieces here. So that'll give me a total of six holsters. Uh, my two outer holsters are going to be backed by blue and my middle one by white. And I think that's going to make a really nice combination. So I'm going to get all this cut out and then I'm going to show you how to punch holes down the side and we can screw them on to the board that is almost dry. So I have my six pieces of leather all cut out and ready for um, holes to be punched through them to allow uh, the screws to pass through because there will be screws that attach this leather and these holsters to the board. And uh, in my first video, I made these holes, I cleared these holes uh, by using a power drill and a power drill bit and just drilling uh, drilling through the leather until it punctured a hole. And that can work. That, that method does work, but it is a little inaccurate because the drill bit will kind of slide around on this leather before it actually punctures it and makes the hole. So it doesn't really make it exactly where you marked it and you just kind of have to work with what, what ends up. A better method is to use a leather hole punch, which is this tool right here. You can get one on Amazon for under $10. And uh, it has different sizes for different size holes that you want to punch in leather. Even if you don't plan on making another wine rack, this is a super useful tool around the house because there's a size here or here to make an extra hole in a leather belt. There's a size here, a very, very small size here that you could use to make an extra hole in the strap of a buckle on, on your shoes, like on a de very delicate pair of nice shoes. If, if, if they're not small enough for you, uh, you can make an extra hole in the in the buckle on them. Uh, so really nice tool to have around, super cheap. And uh, what you do is after marking uh, the places for the screws, you just line it up and press really, really hard until you hear a click. And that should make a really nice hole in your leather. And do that for the other two. And there you go. There are your three holes. Really nice and clean. I'm ready, ready for, uh, ready to be screwed on to the board. And now you have a template that you can use to mark and puncture holes through the other pieces of leather. So now we're going to figure out how to evenly distribute and install the three wine holsters on this board. So I've given us a bird's eye view of the board. And we're going to use this even side, this flat side, as the top because it's easy to measure down from here where the wine holsters will begin. Over here it's a little jagged and they might make them uneven. So this is going to be the top here. And we need to figure out the total length of the board, which is about 27 inches. That's perfect. Most of my wine racks are about 27 inches. And we need to pay attention because there are some unusable inches over here because we can't or we don't want to cover this great imperfection up over here with a wine holster. So we measure, it's about three inches. So we want to make sure if we're not going to put a wine holster for three inches over here, we definitely don't want to put a wine holster for three inches over here either. We want them to begin each about three inches in so it's even. And remember how I told you that we can't drill directly into this wood because the texture might guide the drill bit in the wrong direction. Well, that's where this board comes in. I've cut it down to the same length as this board, so 27 inches, and it's going to act as our template board. So everything that we measure and draw, we're going to do on this board because it's scrap. It doesn't matter. We can draw on it and we can't draw on this down here. So this is how I calculated it. I went in of actually about three and a half inches because I just wanted to make sure that we did not uh, end up covering that really gnarly knot that's over here because it's so great and I, I want that to be really visible. And what I did was I know that each one of my wine holsters uh, spans five inches. I know this because I, I've made several other ones. I'll show you the image here in a moment. And uh, so uh, I knew that after the 3.5 inches that the five inch wine holster would begin. So that's eight, uh, eight and a half inches on each side. And that uh, comes up, uh, takes off uh, 17 inches from our total 27 inches, meaning that from here to here was 10 inches. 
And I knew that I had one more wine holster that was going to sit pretty right here in the middle of those 10 inches. So 10 minus 5 is another 5 inches, and I had to evenly distribute those 5 inches here. This is 2.5 inches right here, and so is this. So that's how I figured out how to evenly distribute uh, my wine holsters on this template board. Now we're going to figure out what's the right measurement, how to, how to uh, mark these holes for the drill bit and to drill the leather pieces and the holsters onto the wine rack. So this here you might recognize uh, is uh, the wine rack, the very first wine rack I made. You'll see it in my uh, first video too. It's not the one I made in the video. This is the very, very first one I made for my home. And uh, I go by this design because uh, I know it works well and it's worked well for me for years. And I know that here, the, the, uh, the, the holsters span five inches. And then down here, that you need to go a half inch in from the edge. So it's five inches here and down here about four inches. But I know that from wherever it starts up here that it needs to go in about a half inch. And then that's how I determine uh, how to install uh, the, the new holsters on the new wine racks. Now, as you can see, I already marked uh, the holes there uh, for this side, and I'm going to show you how to do how I did that. We know that we want uh, this top corner to be right here, flush uh, in the corner here. This top of this board does not represent the top of our actual board. This is just where we want the wine holsters to start, and we do know that we want this little curve right here to sit about a half inch in from the edge. Doesn't have to be exact, exact, but more or less one half inch in. And then we're going to mark where it goes. So we'll do the same thing over here. We'll get it lined up in this corner. And then we'll see if this little curve down here is about a half inch away from the edge line. And it is. And then we'll mark. And then we'll do the same thing again over here. So what I'm doing here is I'm pre-drilling holes to fit a number eight screw, which is what I'll be using. I'll be using these construction screws here. And I just need to pre-drill a hole for the construction screw so that it easily is installed into the board. And I'm using a 1 8 drill bit. I have uh, clamped my template board onto my actual board. And uh, I clamped it to the table to keep it kind of stable on this end. That end didn't reach all the way to the end of the table, but I just used a regular clamp on that end. And all the way across the top, I measured that this is one and a quarter inch all the way across, the, all the way from here, all the way. It's one and a quarter inch down from the top. And now I'm just going to drill through these holes all the way through this board and all the way uh, down into this board here. I almost forgot, but I didn't. We want to mark and drill two installation holes uh, in this empty space right here. This is how the wine rack is eventually going to be installed with two much larger screws than what are holding the holsters in here. Uh, we just, for now, want to mark these holes uh, through this template and just, you know, just mark it a little bit with, uh, with the drill bit. Now, we'll go back later uh, when all is said and done and widen those holes with a, with a larger drill bit because we will be using larger screws for those holes. So the nice thing with, when you're done with this is that you already have a template to go by if you ever want to make another one, uh, another wine rack that's exactly 27 inches long. So now I guess this is my favorite part because you really get to see uh, all the fruits of your labor come together now as you install the holsters onto the wine rack.
That's perfect. It's exactly what we want. So here's a view of it kind of upright. Uh, tomorrow I'll be able to install it and, and give you some good uh, photos of it actually being installed. Uh, I'm running out of daylight now so I don't really have great light to show uh, installation shot. I also took a larger drill bit and I uh, uh, drilled clearance holes right here uh, where we're going to use um, the, uh, the installation screws. Uh, I used 11 uh drill bit so that those installation screws could actually clear clear this hole because you you know when you were using when you're using screws to install something you don't want the screws to to dig into what you're installing you want them to dig into the, whatever they're being installed into either a wall anchor or your actual wall uh, so tomorrow when I can give you a better shot uh, with a uh, morning light of how this is going to look once it's installed uh, you'll get a better idea of uh, what I'm talking about. So now it's the next day and now I've got plenty of daylight uh, to, to stage and photograph my wine rack. And the reason why that's important is because I, I sell most of my things online. And so I have to have really good photographs uh, to make them look good. And in order to get a good photograph, you really have to use daylight. Uh, the problem is I love to work at night. I'm a night owl. But I always have to wait until the next day so that I can finalize the project, get it staged and photographed. To install this wine rack, I used two cabinet screws that go through those holes that I pre-drilled last night. And uh, I use a three inch cabinet screw because I need the screw to clear the width here of the wine rack and then have enough screw left over to install it into the wall and get it, uh, and get it to clear the uh, wall anchor that will be actually installed in the wall and the screw goes into that and the wall anchor helps the screw hold the weight of the wine rack to the wall. Here I'm not using uh, wall anchors because I've got it in this really really thin uh, board here. It's just particle board that I've painted white and I use this for staging because every time I make a wine rack I don't want to install it into my actual apartment wall because that would create a lot of holes that I would have to plug up later. So I just use this board here and uh, prop it up on this beautiful uh, radiator box that my boyfriend made and uh, and then I take the photos and then I crop the photos so that you would never know that this isn't actually a wall. So I'm going to show you those photos here in a minute but before I do I want to thank you for watching this video. Uh, please subscribe to my channel and uh, please contact me if you want any of the templates. I'm actually going to try to find a way to get the board template uh, scanned so you can download that too so you don't have to do any of the thinking you can just make this and uh, quickly have your wine rack without having to do any of the math or the measuring or anything like that. And uh, oh, you can find my Etsy store at roughdraftdiy.etsy.com. And uh, other than YouTube, the best way to keep up with my projects is on Instagram at roughdraftdiy. So thanks again for watching, and I'll be back in a little bit with another video.